Shalom, shalom. This is Pastor Les uh, with Iskar Forum. Welcome back. And I'd like to have a word of prayer, and then we'll begin. My Heavenly Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, as we've just celebrated your Passover, uh, along with your people around the world. I thank you for the faithfulness of your promise and the restoration that's going on right now in Israel and with your people. And Lord, we also thank you for the resurrection day we've celebrated today, the life of Jesus. He died. He was the son of God who died, but he didn't stay in the grave. He was raised from the dead and he's alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I would like to just draw my, your attention to uh, my commentary. I do once or twice a week on uh, my blog. It's called the uh, Elisha Vision Commentary, and the address is www.wordpress, excuse me, <laughs> it's www.elishavision.wordpress.com. And I encourage you to go look at it uh, this week. Um, last Tuesday, I put up a beautiful picture of a young, uh, two young boys and their father praying at the Western Wall uh, with the father with his hands wrapped around the two boys and touching the wall. And the Lord really spoke a word to me in that. And I encourage you to uh, go look at that picture. All right, um, I want to begin today a little uh, something a little different than usual. We're going to get to the news in a minute, but uh, I have uh, I have a, something I just want to share to uh, particularly Christians uh, around the world, whoever may be watching this video on YouTube. Um, we've just celebrated the resurrection and, of course, Passover, and and uh, it's a strong Christian tradition around the world to. Uh, call the name of Resurrection Sunday uh, by the name of a pagan goddess. Uh, it's called Easter, and the pagan goddess uh, name originally in Babylon was Ishtar, and then uh, it's changed down through the years as Starte and and uh, other other names. But it's the same goddess that goes through as a goddess of fertility. And I'd just like to share four scriptures with you uh, today that. For your uh, consideration, I'm not condemning anybody for for using that that name, but I believe we should, as Christians, we should start weaning ourselves of using that name, and uh, lift up rather the name of the living God, Jehovah, and His Son, Jesus, Yeshua. But there are four scripture verses I want to share with you, and uh, just I, I can't preach them. I don't have time to to develop each one, but I it's pretty self-evident. The first one is Exodus 23:13. It says, And in all that I have said to you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other gods, nor let it be heard from your mouth. So, step one, don't even mention other gods' names. Step two is the next verse, Joshua chapter 23, verse 7. And lest you go among these nations, those who remain among you, you shall not make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause anyone to swear by them. You shall not serve them, nor bow, bow down to them, but you shall hold fast to Jehovah your God, as you have done to this day. So there we have, don't mention the names of other gods, and don't swear by them or cause anybody to bow down by them. And of course, today the God of Islam is being worshipped in more and more of a public way all over uh, not only the Muslim world, but the Western world and the streets of our cities. You see hundreds, even thousands of of Muslim worshipers bowing down to a pagan god, uh, a god who is not a father by their own uh, holy book. Uh, the third verse is Psalm 16, verse 4. Their sorrow shall be multiplied who hasten after another god. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. So here's a third verse that says not to use the names of other gods. And we have gotten so uh, callous and casual about naming other gods. In my teaching from time to time, I'll mention it as I did a minute ago, the goddess, I mentioned her name, but that is a, just simply to call attention to who we're talking about. But I, in my personal uh, discipline, I just don't use those names anymore. And uh, here it says, it links it in Psalm 16, verse 4, to drink offerings of blood. And, of course, there's not a more bloody and violent religion, I, I believe, on the planet other than Islam. And I certainly don't want to be using the name of the God of Islam. 
And then finally, the other verse is Hosea, uh, chapter 2, verse 17. For I will take from her mouth the names of the Baals, and they shall be remembered by their name no more. So the ultimate judgment of God is actually to wipe out the, all the names of all the other gods, all the pagan deities, and only his name will, will survive in all eternity. The name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, so it's interesting that well, the scripture says God is going to wipe out the names of the pagan gods. Then what does Satan want to do? We've talked a lot about Psalm 83. Psalm 83 verse 4 says those who attack who are against God and attack Israel uh, because Israel is the closest they can get to attacking God. Uh, verse 4 of Psalm 83 says they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel be remembered no more. Where do you think Satan got that idea? <laughs> God says you're going to wipe out the name of all the pagan gods so Satan says, oh, I got an idea. I'm going to wipe out the name of Israel. And of course, he's been uh, fomenting a genocide against Israel in every generation of, of history since, uh, since uh, God promised the promises to the fathers of Israel. Well, there's just some little teaching I don't normally do in my, uh, in my uh, Issachar forum. At least I do. Actually, I do in the live one, but I don't do it too often on, on camera. So uh, I want you just to uh, take note of that. Look up those scripture verses. I won't go over them again. You can see them. You, you can go back and listen to the video and, and pick them out. Uh, but now let's talk about the news. Of course, uh, the Pope remains in the news. Uh, he was named, Pope Francis was named uh, just a couple weeks ago. And then, of course, all the Christian holidays, he's been in the news just about every day. And, uh, and there's actually, he's causing some waves among the traditionalists in the Catholic Church. And the most recent thing was uh, he... Uh, engaged in a foot washing uh, at a prison uh, as a sign of his humility, which he's been doing several different things like that. And uh, on the one hand, that's a pretty, pretty uh, you know, it's a good thing, I would say, you know, talking about caring for the prisoners and so forth. However, something that wasn't mentioned, because it's not in the headline, most people haven't heard this, but whose feet did he wash? Well, it was several male prisoners but he also washed the feet of two female prisoners, which is absolutely forbidden for Catholics to do, for priests to do. They're not to wash the feet of females, only males, which I didn't know. But <laughs> uh, but that's it even gets more intriguing because one of the girls that he washed was an Italian Catholic, but the other feet, girl's feet that he washed was a Serbian Muslim. The Pope washed the feet of a Serbian Muslim girl in prison. And uh, that leads me uh, to uh, another story that's also uh, in the news since Pope Francis, Francis has actually come out to say that uh, the Catholic Church needs to have dialogue with Islam. Those of you that have heard me teach in person know that from time to time I've mentioned that I believe that the, uh, the this new Pope is going to uh, make advances trying to connect Pope, uh, I mean, Catholicism and Islam. And I think, uh, well, he's actually said it. Um, he says he felt that it was vital to strengthen communications with other religions, particularly dialogue with Islam. And uh, that's pretty uh, scary when you realize what's really happening with that. And uh, then there's another story while I stay on uh, Catholicism. A famous uh, Arab convert uh, to Christianity who was actually uh, baptized uh, or, or made his confession of faith. He'd, uh, he'd been a Muslim and he converted to being a Christian. And he did it actually uh, in public in the presence of Pope uh, Benedict uh, in 2008. Well, as a result of the new statements and the movement of the Catholic Church toward accommodation with Islam, he has now rena renounced his Catholicism. This uh, famous Arab, his name is uh, uh, Magdi Cristiano Alam, and uh, he has now renounced his Catholicism. He says he's going to remain a Christian, but he doesn't want to be associated with the Catholic Church anymore uh, because he believes that uh, the Church is beginning to legitimize Islam, a religion that is inherently violent. And uh, that, he believes, is very dangerous, and he you know, rejects it completely. Um, 
he says, this Arab Christian says, I am convinced that Islam is an ideology inherently violent, as it has been historically, conflictual inside and warlike outside. I am even more convinced that Europe will be eventually submitted to Islam, as has already happened since the 7th century. And he criticized the church for not having the vision and the courage to denounce the incompatibility of Islam with our civilization and fundamental rights of the person. So thus you have a rather public uh, renunciation of Catholicism, and yet the, the man wants, he says he's still a Christian, he believes in Jesus, but he believes the church is headed down in the wrong direction. Well, another news item this week, the United Nations Human Rights Council met uh, and they, about they, all they ever do is condemn Israel. So they passed five more resolutions against Israel. There's 47 members. There was some controversy over the fact that the U.S. even was willing to be a member of this. Well, uh, 46 of them all voted for these five uh, resolutions against Israel. The U.S. voted against all five of them. But uh, it doesn't do much good uh, to be a part of something like that. And I think the U.S. ought to withdraw from it and, and with uh, indignance. <laughs> um, I hope you've seen on the news that the, one of the things that happened as a result of President Obama's trip to Israel recently was that they uh, he pressured Israel to apologize to Turkey for a flotilla incident three years ago and and uh, that was kind of big news. It was uh, President Obama's big diplomatic uh, victory. Well, it, <laughs> Turkey's already reneging on the deal. They've added more uh, more conditions, uh, which is just the typical pattern for a thousand years of Islam. And I don't know how the West keeps falling for that, but uh, the headline in Breitbart News says, new apology tour, same old result. Turkey reneges on Israel deal. And then uh, moving over to Egypt, I'm going to try to go through these headlines quickly because I've got a lot to cover. <laughs> um, the Black Bloc attacks Muslim Brotherhood targets in Egypt. This is a liberal anti-Islamic group uh, who has been attacking, uh, basically uh, opposing the government of, of uh, Egypt and, and Mohamed Morsi, who is a Muslim Brotherhood uh, representative, uh, the president. And uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I, I wrote a blog a few months ago. It, will Morsi, when, when he starts having riots against him, will he back down or crack down? And the answer is, uh, from the beginning, has been he will crack down. In fact, uh, just a week a week ago, the headline in uh, theblaze.com says, Fuming Egyptian president warns he will do whatever is necessary to protect, quote-unquote, his country very, very soon. And basically, he's threatening to crack down on the protesters, uh, just as I said he would, and I believe he will do that. And I, it's not based on my wisdom. It's based on Isaiah 19, if you want to look it up. That's what the the violent leader of Egypt is going to do. Uh, then just a couple just facts. These are also reported this week in the news. Uh, women chronically assaulted in the square where Morsi's revolution started. This talks about how regularly now women are uh, sexually assaulted in, in uh, Tahrir Square. In fact, on uh, the, the report has come out that on January 25th, at least 19 women were assaulted on that one day. And it's been every single day since then in varying numbers and varying degrees but being raped and stripped and so forth uh, very, it's, a woman cannot go into the square safely anymore uh, there's another report uh, just the other day a couple days ago uh, a Christian demonstrators kidnapped and tortured at an Egyptian mosque and there's a picture of one of the ones that was tortured and a uh, pretty serious picture um, and uh, so this whole Muslim Brotherhood uh, revolution, ho ho supposed uh, de democracy in Egypt, is uh, already turning into a dictatorship, and it's going to be worse than it was under Mubarak. Also in Egypt, uh, Hanania, one of the leaders of uh, Hamas in Gaza, is meeting with uh, Egyptian intelligence chief today, uh, actually uh, complaining that Israel is breaking the ceasefire uh, with Gaza. When, uh, of course, while President Obama that was there, several rockets, I think four rockets were fired in one day uh, from Gaza into Israel. And, uh, and yet uh, the, the claim is that Israel is the one breaking the ceasefire. Well, uh, one, one item here about Iran. Uh, the, uh, 
security a security official in Israel is very disgruntled, and he claims that Obama threw sand in Israel's eyes during his visit, uh, which seemed to convince Jerusalem to hold back on military action. He's upset with that. He says that um, Iran is advancing at a murderous pace and could have the bomb by July. And uh, this is an authority in Israel that uh, should know what he's talking about. And uh, it's a security source uh, connected to the government. And uh, pretty serious. And uh, all, then also I want to talk about Syria a little bit. Uh, there's a report now that Israel has been spying on the Russian fleet, which has stationed itself off the coast of Syria. And that in fact, they've actually had on a, a deserted island, Israel's had some electronic uh, and video eyes and ears where they've actually been able to watch the, the ships and ship movement in real time and video, <laughs> uh, which uh, I think is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, too bad it got discovered. But uh, that's just another example of what's going on as we're building up for war, the Psalm 83 war. Um, there's an article on Debka file that says the West embargoes arms to Syrian rebels over their resale to Al-Qaeda. That's the headline. And basically what's happened is some of the arms that are coming through from the West are being uh, sold, resold to Al-Qaeda and they're ending up in Al-Qaeda's hands. Uh, and that's a pretty serious thing. That was announced actually by the uh, president of France on the uh, on March 29th, Friday. And uh, the, probably one of the more serious things that's happening is that uh, the some of the rebels, a good number of the rebels fighting Assad are actually connected to Al-Qaeda. And that particular group, or one of those groups, is now actually um, has seized areas along the Israeli and Jordanian borders uh, to Syria and uh, seem to be setting up for some serious uh, could even attack in Israel from there. And uh, another thing I want to mention uh, about uh, Syria is that the, uh, the opposition have actually named a leader. Uh, the headline in, uh, in uh, World News on NBC.com says, From Dallas to Damascus, the Texas straight shooter who could replace Syria's Assad. Uh, I can't read you the whole story, but it tells about this uh, this guy who's the new uh, will need be the head backed by the West of the opposition in Syria. His name is Ghassan Hito or Hito, yeah Hito, and uh, he's been lived in the Houston area for three decades and as a businessman. But uh, as you get deeper into the story, you find out that he's uh, really talked very highly, uh, recommended by uh, Care, the the Islamic. Uh, group that has connections to the to the Muslim Brotherhood and in fact uh, even in this piece on uh, NBC News it says that uh, he is actually is seen as the Muslim Brotherhood's pick to be the leader uh, the new leader of uh, of Syria well the US is already backing him and and uh, saying all kinds of nice things about him but uh, it's pretty serious uh, that uh, that he is uh, basically the Muslim Brotherhood pick and it uh, looks like he'll be the new leader when Assad falls. Well, also on Syria, uh, Israel, meanwhile, is setting up a field hospital in the Golan, on the Syrian border with Israel, a field hospital for wounded Syrians. Uh, well, while they're killing each other, Israel is still trying to save lives, and, and uh, good for them. Uh, also, one of the effects of Obama's visit to Israel was he unlocked $500 million dollars uh, in funding for the Palestinian Authority, half a billion dollars uh, for Abbas and the Palestinians. Of course, most of that ends up in in Abbas's and other leaders' uh, Swiss bank accounts. Uh, and r right after that, the Palestinian Authority and Jordan, with King Abdullah's agreement, have signed an agreement uh, to def a deal to defend Jerusalem against Judaization. Uh, saying that their common goal is to defend Jerusalem and their opposition to so-called Judaization of the city. They're, they're saying that the Jews are trying to make Israel or make Ju Jerusalem uh, sound like it has some historical roots to Israel and Judaism. <laughs> That's part of the, the uh, blasphemous propaganda against God's purpose for the land. The land belongs to Israel. Jerusalem is God's city. Well, uh, this same Palestinian Authority has recently jailed uh, one uh, Palestinian web uh, writer uh, 
because on his Facebook page, he liked an anti-Palestinian authority comment where they were saying something disagreeing with the Palestinian leadership, uh, an article, and he just liked it. Like, you know, anybody out there on Facebook and you like something, well, he's going to be serving a year in jail for that, <laughs> or six months in jail, just because he liked somebody who was uh, criticizing the Palestinian Authority. Uh, that's that uh, wonderful uh, Palestinian Authority. Uh, one of the new leaders in Israel, uh, uh, Naftali Bennett, the head of the Bahit, Bahit Yehuda Party, uh, House of Israel, House of Judah, actually says uh, his comment about Obama's visit, he says it was like Oslo revisited. Uh, Obama's PC uh, feely statements reminded him of the euphoria preceding the terror war. This time he vows things will be different. And there are some new strong leaders that are standing for the uh, they're, they're biblical Zionists saying that the land is Israel's and uh, he's one of them and so I'm glad he's speaking out. Uh, this week also has been the apartheid week around the United States and other parts of the world um, where uh, they on campuses all over there are rallies accusing Israel of being apartheid. All, they're trying to make it sound like Israel's like South Africa but apartheid involves having apartheid laws there are no apartheid laws in Israel. Jews and Arabs can ride it on the same buses. They can drink out of the same fountains. Um, people are trying to make it sound like Israel treats uh, the Arabs like, like South Africa treated the blacks or like, uh, like America treated the slaves. And it, the point is, it just doesn't measure up to truth and reality. That's not happening in Israel whatsoever. Um, in the uh, in fact, the latest... Uh, new, uh, a couple years ago, Miss Israel in the beauty pageants was an Arab. This year's Miss Israel is an Ethiopian black Jew. And uh, so it's just ridiculous, those claims. But across America, students are being told that Israel's apartheid. It's a lie from the pit of hell. That's what I say. <laughs> um, another, another propaganda thing. The uh, anonymous group uh, is saying that, there is a, that they're going to erase Israel from the Internet. That they're going to attack Israel on a specific day, all the Israeli sites, uh, next Sunday, a week from today, on April 7th, and they're going to uh, take Israel. Uh, Israel should be prepared to be erased from the Internet. So I don't know whether they can do that or not, but uh, it's worth being aware of. And then uh, I want to com uh, close with uh, some, also some very good news. Uh, today, the, the oil is flowing, or excuse me, the natural gas is flowing from the wells off the coast of Haifa, flowing to shore in Ashdod and Ashdod and they're being uh, this is going to have the effect of eventually making Israel be completely energy self-sufficient. The United States could do that if we would use our uh, resources but Israel's doing it. Uh, there are two major fines just uh, in the last couple or last few years eight and a half trillion cubic feet in one area and 16 trillion cubic feet in another. Almost 25 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. It's enough for Israel to uh, have for decades, have all they need, and actually be able to export it and enter the world market and actually probably kind of upset the apple cart in some ways. So praise God for that. Well, let's close in prayer. Thank you for listening today. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you, Lord, that you are restoring the what the canker worm has eaten. <laughs> you are where you d judged Israel doubly, you're now blessing them doubly in this great favoring and restoration of your land and your people. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. See you next week. Bye-bye.